Grandfather would say black on one side is the same as brown on two. Well, guys, I'm, I'm in Labrador, finally. I can't believe it. It's been a while since I've been here. It's been six years, and here I am, way out on the land. I'm about 60 kilometers away from uh, Happy Valley Goose Bay. And uh, I'm out near the Mealy Mountains, a place called Big River. And I'm, I'm staying at Jerry's Cabin. And Jerry's Cabin is awesome, man. It is wicked to be here. I love being here. There's other cabins in the neighborhood uh, on Big River. Not many, like maybe a handful, and they're all friends, right? They're all friends around here, and uh, they've got this glorious view. I'm here for a couple of days, right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so a few days, really. And uh, it took us about two hours to get out here on snowmobile. We've got a bunch of plans for today. We're going to go uh, into the bush, and we're going to uh, set up a tent and probably do some fishing here. We're going to go cut some wood and just really enjoy time like out. In, on the land, right? And breathing in this fresh air. I, I picked up a little bit of a bug when I traveled over here uh, all the way across the country. And uh, when I'm out in this fresh air, I, I feel better. Yeah, I'll catch a couple of fish. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, it's fun. <laughs> oh, you're not going back in. <laughs> Jerry's in there now cutting down the biggest tree I've ever seen in my life in terms of coming down for firewood. The firewood I have back home is nothing compared to this tree. A tree's got to be almost two feet wide at the base. And it's coming right at us. You see, Jerry's got so much experience. Like for him, it's nothing to take down that tree and to clean it out. I've got quite a bit of experience now cutting down trees, but I'm learning, right? I'm still learning. I'm coming out here, and that's the whole point, right? Learning from the master. And so he's, uh, he's making quick work of that wood. It's almost a quart of wood, that one tree. It's crazy. I might have to back up to get, a, get them lifted up. What are you doing, Jeremy? Hey, you're looking at our carpet. This is gonna be the floor of our tent. My father's had me do this, so I was six years old. His job was to put up the tent, and my job was to go collect the, uh, the ballast for the carpet. And what are you looking for, anything particular? I'm looking for the fur. I'll show you the difference. Right now. Let's take a look at how, how flat that all is, right? See how flat that all is? Yeah. Now come look at a spruce. Okay. Look how this is all so rough and you oh, know going in all different directions and yeah. 
Right. Once you get in the tent, your boots come off and you're barefoot all day long, all night long, good and comfortable. Your feet are not in the snow. You walk in and out with wet boots or snow. It's all falling down through all these limbs and dry again in no time, especially with the fire going, right? Riding in the back of a comet. <laughs> I'm sitting down now. <laughs> in the Comatic here and the snow is really really soft because of how warm it is and we ended up getting stuck a little bit here so we're gonna try to get ourselves out and here comes a little bit of extra muscle right there Not bad, not bad. What are you doing here, Jerry? Just making a tripod for the hold the front. Any special way to tie it? No, as long as you don't come out. As long as you don't come apart, that's all you're worried about, right? I gotta use the length of this. Yep. Yep. He's long, boy. He's long. <laughs> I'm just more natural with it. Mm -hmm. Seems easier. Easy, see? Easy. Look at all those knots in it. Good knot in that one, besides that. Like, I, probably, I bet you I can't even get that to dig. <laughs> you won't. If, the, if it's a sharp axe, the weight of the axe should dig in, right? Like, I bear, just have to let it. Yeah.
no right or wrong way of doing this. It's just if you have all the bows pointing one way, it makes it a lot simpler to lay down, right? Think so. How long will the bows last? Well, you come here this uh, this coming summer, and you'll you'll see where we had the tent for sure. But if would okay. you change if you were to stay here for a couple of weeks, would you be changing out the bows? No, no, no. They'll stay green for a long time. Really learning a lot out here today uh, with these with these men who've been doing this for a long time. As you heard, Jeremy's been doing it his whole life. Jerry's been doing it for years. These guys have so much experience. And that tent looks just beautiful in the woods like that. Holy smokes, is it ever nice. Labrador flag. Can't beat it, right? Deep in the bush here in Labrador. And this is the stuff I dream of. I know you guys are seeing a lot of them and not that much of me in this video, but really I'm here to learn, right? Like I'm documenting uh, what they're doing and I'm showing you guys all of their skills and their talents and I'm, I'm learning from them as I go, so. It's, uh, man, it's just been wonderful. Now we're gonna go in there, we're gonna have a cup of tea. Jerry made this stove. He made one similar for me one time. There's a draft system on the front there. What do you got there, Jerry? Caribou skin? Yeah. It's for... In the winter time, we have it for sleep night. Yep. Gotta be turned. We got these big logs here for chairs, and they are perfect. Lots of room. Not cool. <laughs> right on, cheers. 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 <laughs> You're not having uh, sugar? Sugar? No, I'm going straight okay. back. I can go without I milk. I'll have sugar in the morning. Though. I don't drink tea home at all. I drink salt tea. I never had coffee now for over two years. I'm going to have coffee when we get back to the cab. I got salmon for my supper. Oh, yeah. That's strong. That'll cure me. <laughs>
Ouais, merci. The design, I figured, would be the best way for uh, the heat to get up through around your oven, right? To have your oven higher than the stove. A lot of people make some uh, at the same level. It'll still go past your oven, but it's going to take the easiest route, route to get out to your point. This way here, the slope on the back, the back gap of the oven is bigger than the front gap. So it's pretty well even, like when it goes up, right? Like because of the slope, the door and the frame of the door is cast iron. That's why they're bolted. Now they came off of, of an old uh, oil and coal burn furnace that came out of housing area years ago. With that size of a door on the front, it kind of limited on how big my draft could be. And a stove that size, you needed a good draft. And I'm pretty sure you notice what kind of draft that thing puts out when you start it up. So I wouldn't, you wouldn't have that draft. I wouldn't have the room to put that draft on that size on the front because the door frame takes up most of the front. Right? Yeah, that's wrapping bacon having the draft on the front the ear is coming in evenly on the stove instead of from one end and then going up the pipe instead of you know this way here it goes up the back of the stove how many stoves do you think you've built in your life all stoves this one the small ones the galvanized the one you made for me oh. I probably heavy duty stoves like this two or three Jeremy got one, uh, a friend of mine got one, Gunner Bird. Uh, tent stoves, I wouldn't be able to count. Uh, like I, I wouldn't be able to count how many I made. Made a lot. I get uh, asked to make stoves a lot of times. I still do get asked to make stoves. I'm not interested. You know, like, I made enough stoves. He does it in one strike. I'm bouncing out here, Jerry. Okay. Oh yeah. All right. that same spot yeah so this right here is fresh trout just caught out of this river and it's um, you can see how red it is there it's been salted and dried a bit over a stove 
and uh, there's still bones in it, but that's fine. We'll pick it off. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fry it in some sausage grease. Oh, but that looks good, and it's, you can really feel the oils on your fingers. You can eat it just like that, but I'm going to fry it a bit. You know, being out here in the depths of Labrador on uh, Lake Melville is wicked. It's wicked. You know, we're pretty far out. And you still get some visitors around. A couple of people drove by today to say hi, and it's like a little community out here, right? Like a little cabin community. And. Uh, and everybody knows everyone and everyone stops in and everyone says hi and it's just it's really great man it's, that's what cabin life is like in labrador whereas at my tent if you watch my channel you know that it's um, you know it's very solitary i do everything alone and, and i love that i love being alone out there but being out here and you know talking to labradorians and uh meeting people and, and doing labrador things you can't beat it really can't beat it so I know this was a little bit of a different style video for me not too much talking and not mu too much carrying you you know through the video but I just kind of wanted the experience to speak for itself right and uh, you can't beat the beauty out here I mean it's something else it's you know it's it's epic really so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video I had a really good time and uh yeah this is this is labrador this is where i grew up this is home so thanks so much for watching i'll be back really soon